with the stock market and certain stocks reaching new highs on a weekly basis, it's quite interesting to look at stocks that have come down actually from their 52 week highs and have come down quite significantly. Now in this video, we're going to look at these types of stocks. We're actually going to look at those three stocks that you see here on the screen. I hope you keep watching the video, even though you already know which stocks will come up. So without further ado, if you enjoy this type of videos, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not, would really appreciate that. And of course, leave your stock pick down in the comment section below. Doesn't have to be one of the three. Maybe you found another stock that's down significant amount from the highs and you think it's undervalued. Let me know down in the comment section below. And if you want to support me even further, do check out the link down in the description and in the pinned comments with the top 10 best stocks to buy now or go to full.com forward slash couch investor. Thank you very much. So stock number one I want to touch on is Crocs. Yes. Crocs, the company that makes those weird looking shoes. Well, I don't know if you can call them shoes, but okay. Crocs is a company with a market cap of $6.46 billion and a forward PE of 8.7 times. You will say, oh, that's quite a low PE, so it must be cheap. Well, no, that's not really how I look at things. It's a low PE, but it's not a company that's expected to grow 20% year over year or something like that. If you look at the expected growth rate, for sales, yes, it's true that it's expected to accelerate in the coming fiscal years, but as you can see, we're growing at what, 3 4% or so year over year. EPS is growing a little bit faster than that, although in fiscal 2025, it's expected to be flat to down-ish. So that's that. If we look at the current average analyst price target, that sits 22.3% higher than the price we're at today. 16 analysts covering this company, four with a strong buy, seven with a buy, and five with a hold. Now looking at some pricing metrics here, here you can basically see that this stock was never really trading at a high premium, right? Forward PE, 8.7 times compared to the five year mean, 13.8 times. So yes, it is lower, but it's not like it was trading at 20 times or 25 times previously. Yes, there was once where it was trading at around 33 times or so. I mean, hype and unprofitability of the company will give you these types of numbers. All the rest here looks quite okay. Price earnings to growth is a bit more expensive than what you would have expected. Still under two, so I guess that's fine. If you look at shares outstanding in the last five years or so, shares outstanding have actually come down by 15%. So they're definitely returning some value to shareholders. Now, with regards to Crocs, of course, we've seen what the market expects revenue to do in the coming fiscal years, but what about free cash flow? And this is the tricky part because when we'll do the reverse DCF in just a bit, it's going to be important to know that free cash flow is expected to come down in the coming fiscal years. Currently, in the last 12 months, that sits at 940 million, but for the fiscal year 2024, it's expected to be around 800 million and then come down even further to 745.5 million and then 700 and $40 million by fiscal 2026. All in all, in the last couple of years, this company has done a tremendous job. Revenue has gone up 292% since Q1 2018. And of course, the big, big jump came actually during the pandemic. You can call it a hype, but I mean, the hype then definitely did continue. Free cash flow margin continues to go up. Net income is quite stable and growing, so all good. The only issue here is probably going to be the Hey Dude brand. That's the only part of the business that has not done well for them. So the total Crocs brand overall has continued to grow. The problem here is Hey Dude. Hopefully, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons why the stock got hit. It's because of that brand that has been lagging. Hopefully, there will be some turnaround in 2025. They say they think they've turned or they are starting to turn things around. So remains to be seen if that will be true. All in all, if we look at last quarter, what have we seen? We've seen revenues just increasing 1.5%, cost of sales down 7.5% and gross profit is up close to 9%. We've also seen that selling GNA expenses is up 18.1%. So definitely growing that much quicker than revenue. But we've also seen that net income is up 12.8% and shares are standing down 3.43%. And so if we do a quick reverse DCF here, we plug in the free cash flow trailing 12 months, terminal growth rate, discount rate, we see that the implied growth rate, even at 0%, means that this company should be 118% higher than what it is today. Now, of course, we can maybe 
increase the discount rate to let's say 10% or so, that means that well the stock should be at 55.93% higher than the price we're at right now. And even, let's say, even if we plug in the expected free cash flow for the fiscal year, not the trailing 12 months, but the expected free cash flow, still, still this stock should be 32% higher than the price we're at right now. And now looking at the graph here, we can see that, well, the uptrend line is respected, was respected back here in November of 2023 and was respected back here couple of weeks ago so we're making our way back up some solid momentum here we are above the 20 day moving average the 50 day one sits at 116 dollars and the 200 day one at 125.2 dollars so that was crocs let me know what you think about this company down in the comment section below moving on to company number two and that's the local i personally own that company the local as you can see year to date is down 35.7 percent has a market cap of just $3.24 billion and a forward PE of 22.2 times. Now, unlike Crocs, this is a company that is expected to grow much quicker and is actually profitable as well. So if you look at the current analyst expectations for sales and EPS, fiscal year 2024, EPS expected to be down 20.5%. They've been investing in the company quite a lot. Margins have come down and that's basically one of the main reasons why the stock has come down. We've covered this company quite a lot on the channel. But sales growth of 15.31% followed by two years of 26 or above 26% sales growth and then EPS growing 33 and 36 percent respectively so yeah definitely a very very fast and profitable growing company and me personally i don't think the market still realizes what type of good company this is because currently the average analyst price target sits 3.2 percent lower than the price we're at right now the stock did rebound in the last couple of weeks since the last earnings report but the average analyst price target did not increase that much. There are 11 analysts covering this company, seven with a hold, two with a buy, and two with a strong buy. And here, if you look at the Ford PE, EV to EBITDA price to sales, price to free cash flow, compared to the four year mean, or should I say three and a half year mean, yes, it is cheaper than before. Looking at price earnings to growth because EPS gets hit, we're now sitting at 2.89, but as you've seen, EPS is expected to grow quite quickly after that. And we've seen in the last quarter that gross profit finally rebounded. That was up 12% quarter over quarter, 5% year over year. TPV is up 41% year over year and 8% quarter over quarter. Revenue is also up nicely quarter over quarter. That's an increase of 8%. And year over year, it's up 13%. With regards to adjusted EBITDA, still down year over year. But here you can see solid rebound up 23% quarter over quarter. With the local right now, the expectations are that, well, free cash flow is expected to be negative for the fiscal year 2024 and negative for fiscal 2025. Probably that number will be updated a little bit, but right now the trailing 12 months sits at $168.5 million. I would be very, very surprised if in fiscal 2025, overall free cash flow will not be positive. For those of you that are unfamiliar with this business, here you can see the business since Q4 2019. Revenue is up 1,219%. Net income is up 664%. Free cash flow is up 451%. And I mean, look at this. Since Q4 2020, TPV, total payment volume, is up 1,012%. Shall I remind you, this is a company worth less than $4 billion. And so here, if we do a quick reverse DCF, plugging in the free cash flow trailing 12 months, $168 million, we see that the implied growth rate to justify today's price is for them to grow free cash flow by 3% for the next 10 years. Now, of course, we've seen that free cash flow is expected to be negative, but I find it very, very hard to believe that they cannot achieve 3% free cash flow growth in the next eight years or so, even if we take like a negative year. That's just me. So yeah, I view this as a big opportunity for long-term investors that like these types of businesses and definitely likes the, well, Latin American market. And here as well, we can see that the stock did bottom at the start of August, some solid momentum, especially in the last couple of weeks. That's after the earnings report. We've seen a huge green candle 
failed to stay above the 200 day moving average, but now it seems like we've made our way above it and we'll try to stay above that, which sits at $10.72. Stock number three is one you know very well because we've covered this company a couple of times in the last couple of weeks because, well, the stock has come down quite a lot. In the last three months, this stock is down 57%. Year to date, it's now down 8.8% after being up 120%. This is a company with a market cap of $2.52 billion and a forward PE of 57.2 times, so definitely not the cheapest one out there. But here as well, as you can see, this is a company that's expected to grow quite quickly top and bottom lines. And here, if we look at the average analyst price target, that still sits 72% higher than the price we're at today. There is a conference after hours today. So if there's something crucial, I will edit this video before it goes live. Looking at some pricing metrics, we don't really get that much information. Of course, forward P is much lower than before. Same with EV to EBITDA and price to sales sits at 4.7 times compared to 12.1 times. With regards to Transmedics, you've seen the growth rates for revenue and for free cash flow. For fiscal 2024, free cash flow is still expected to be negative and actually, well, a bit more negative than before. Then in fiscal 2025, it's expected to be $27.1 million and then $105.9 million in fiscal 2026. Overall, what has happened basically last quarter, we've seen a decrease for the first time, right? A decrease here in liver revenue, a decrease in heart revenue, and a decrease in lung revenue. The company said it was a seasonality thing, etc., etc. They did not lose market share, but they didn't really say that they gained market share. So that was also something that the market didn't really like. And so this was basically the major overview, great major overview by Brad Freeman, stock market nerd on X. Now, the thing here is that previously they did give us guidance of $435 million at the midpoint and that already missed by 2.3%. Now we've got new guidance that was given. I'll read a couple of things about that because we also have a new CFO. So guidance at the midpoint is now expected to be $430 million, which means the company lost 15% of its value because midpoint revenue guidance has been lowered by just 5%. Make it make sense. Then we also know that revenue Q1, Q3 was $320 million. So the expected revenue for Q4 is probably going to be around $110 million, which would mean that quarter over quarter we would grow because last quarter that was around $108.8 million. But if they do come short, that means that we might have two consecutive quarters where revenue goes down and that will not be great. They also still expect between 3,500 and 4,000 cases for the year. On Monday, they did make a couple of announcements. So they appointed a new CFO and they updated the 2024 financial outlook. So the current CFO will remain a non-executive employee of the company until March 31st, 2025, before serving as a non-employee senior advisor to the company focusing on national transplant stakeholder engagement until March 31st, 2026. The new CFO has 25 years of experience across the healthcare and consumer packaged goods CPG sectors. As for the new guidance, they now expect revenue for the full year 2024 to be in the range of $428 million to $432 million, which represents 77 to 79% year over year growth, which is still tremendous growth, right? But of course, this could have already been given in the last earnings call because in the last earnings call, the CEO was a bit cocky, let's say. I don't know if I can use that word, but okay. I mean, he was saying everything is fine. We're not losing market share, etc., etc. But how come that you are now changing a CFO and lowering your full year guidance? S something doesn't make much sense here, right? Anyways, I'll probably edit or maybe not edit if something gets mentioned during the conference after hours. So you'll probably see it right now or not. Last thing here is the stock. So right now it does seem like we are in an area where previously back here in March of 2024, we have seen a bottom or a rebound area. Remains to be seen if that's the case this time. Otherwise we'll have that uptrend line at around $55 or so. Of course, until we reach that, could be closer to $60, was previously respected back here in October, November, 2023. And RSI is 
quite low, not yet oversold on the weekly. So overall, those are the three stocks I thought could be interesting to you. I will be opening a position in Transmedic, a small position, short-term rebound I am expecting for this company. Could, could take a month, could take a couple of months. I have time. I currently personally own the local. And to be honest, Crocs is quite interesting. I mean, Q4 is probably going to be quite a strong quarter with all the holidays and all of that. So yeah, we could see a solid rebound in that stock as well. Do let me know what your picks are down in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, do all of that. And I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.